All right. Hey, welcome to the Ambivert versus Omnivert coin part two. If you haven't watched part one, click here to watch part one. And without further ado, let's get into it. My name is Habib Khan and welcome. So why do we care about the ambivert versus omnivert coin in objective personality? Because it'll actually help you with your typing results. You want over 80% accuracy and I've been able to achieve that. And so I wanna help everyone else get to that level. Uh, if you haven't already, of course, right? And more than that, I want to help you understand people as well as yourself. Uh, understanding this coin has really helped me with that. And I want to help you build good habits and hygiene with uh, OPS typing, as well as in general and practicing, you know, scientific method. You want to um, work with patterns that are more provable. And the ambivert versus omnivert coin is a pattern that is inherent within the system of OPS. And when you're dealing with lesser patterns that aren't as evident or provable, then you're wasting a lot of time. And also, I want to help you have a deeper understanding of objective personality. I don't think you can really say you understand objective personality without actually understanding this genetic coin, um, because this is one of the nine coins as far as how things are currently configured. Um, so in this video, this is an overview, is that I'll be going over three key concepts over the course of about 20 minutes or so. I wanted to make it shorter, but there's a lot of good content. There's more than one idea here that's um, really causing this massive update to the system. I want it to be about one coin, but this is having a lot of further implications for things like the introversion, extroversion scale. That's number one. Number two is your checklist. What checklist are you using for typing? Number three is nicknames. How and why do we want to understand the nicknames in order to really be using the ambivert omnivert coin as well as typing and understanding type? So the previous video had a lot of feedback and buzz. Um, I really appreciate these questions and I'm going to be incorporating a lot of them from uh, the previous video, I'm going to be incorporating, well, these are only some of them, um, into this video. And so I want to thank Benjamin, Linda, Muhammad, and Shindig for their questions, because I'm going to be using them in this video, um, and you'll see them. And so thank you for all the positive buzz. There's more than this, but, you know, it's just one slide. Um, anyway let's discover the hidden layers of OPS. I thought an onion is very apt because there are so many layers to this. You think you figure out one and you peel back and there's another layer. Um, yeah. And so a little bit of background on me. I've actually typed over 250 people so far. I'm hoping to type a lot more than that. And uh, it's been two years and I've had over 81% accuracy in recent typings. And so a disclaimer is that an update is inevitable. You know, I know I'm an EP and, you know, I'm stepping on the sandcastle of the IJs, but, you know, we got to update. So here's the ambivert coin. Yes, it's an update. Yes, you may not like it. I understand, but, you know, it's going to happen one way or another. You can wait or you can do it now. Pull off the bandage. Bandage, bandage, whatever. Anyway, um, yeah, so to put it simply, as Benjamin put it, you the, the ambivert and omnivert coin can be described as activating your savior decider twice or your savior observer twice. So the second animal is going to help you activate one of those functions twice that you have as a savior. And so using myself as an example, and here's my type, double masculine, S-E-T-E, play, consume, sleep, we see that my SE gets activated twice, once with the play here with the TE and another time with the consume with the FI. So my FI is activated once and my TE is activated once. So if I were an omnivert, it's not actually me, but um, I would be play blast sleep. So I would be double activated in my TE, single activated in these observing functions. 
And so I'd be more balanced in my observers and I'd have a lot more struggle in the decider world because I'd be so all in on my TE. And so here, the way I really am as an, as an ambivert is I, I have massive swings between the SE and the NI. You see, even with this video, I'm trying to do all this NI and it's just kind of weird and awkward. I have way too much SE and uh, it's almost like a tumor. I mean, that's, yeah, not being literal there. Um, but yeah, anyway, so we want to, one of the first things we want to dive into is the animal stack scales, because this is one of the tools we use to really understand how to position, even kinesthetically, where we type people into. And we are putting people in certain columns and observing uh, where are they more on the play spectrum, sleep, consume, blast. That's what we've traditionally looked at. And so here we have the play on the right, sleep on the left, consume on the left middle, and blast on the left right. So that's great and cool, and we've been using that for a while. Um, and it will always serve its purpose. But we have other scales as well. Here we have the introversion extroversion, where we actually have the super extroverts on the right side and the super introverts on the left side. And as expected, you know, some of the sleepier people on the left, some of the more play-oriented people on the right. However, you have some odd phenomenon, right? Like play first on the introverted side and sleep first on the extroverted side with sleep last play. Um, Dave's type himself, right? He is more on the extroverted side, even though he has sleep first. And so, yeah, this is an interesting scale and it jumbles things up quite a bit. And it does seem accurate to life, you know? It's when you do meet people in real life, um, the scale does seem to check out with reality. And here's another graphic from Personality Academy, um, swinging from the sleep to the play, and as well as all those nuances as captured in the previous, but slightly different graphic, um, myself being introverted. Um, but here is the most important slide, perhaps, of the presentation. And so the ambivert omnivert scale puts the mopes on the left and the crackheads on the right, the skids on the middle right, douchebags on the middle left. Because you can argue, for example, that play is a more extroverted animal than blast and consume is a more extroverted animal than sleep. So that's why skids are to the right of douchebags. But of course, mopes on the left, crackheads are on the right. And so the reason why this is an important slide is because we want to see where we can aesthetically put, you know, you'd be double masculine, you know. I want to know where are the crackheads in society versus where are the modes. And so these are, the omniverts are on the outer four columns, the right four and the left four. And the ambiverts are more in the middle eight columns. And so this makes a lot of sense for at least um, how you look at uh, the orderings here. For example, you're pulling in the blast plays that were, used to be here, you're pulling them in there and pushing the play consumes or more introverted two over that way. And I'm referring to the original scale, right? The standard um, animal stack scale. With consume sleeps, um, we're pulling them from here to the left and we're pushing the sleep blast to the right. And the blast sleeps are being pulled to the left and the consumed plays are being pushed to the right. So it makes a lot of sense when you really stop and think about it. But anyway, this chart is really used to describe where are the omniverts and where are the ambiverts. And so you can use this as a reference and come back to it to really see where do people fit when you're typing them, when you're typing yourself, and when you're comparing yourself with others and understanding, you know, how do you compare with someone else? Continuing on, um, we have the OPS checklists. And so we want to see, what are we using today? So we're using a lot of coins today to type in a practical sense. Um, but yes, there are some superfluous coins that, you know, yes, it's amazing to track the nuance of it all. And I'm not really trying to put anyone down or any tool down, these are very useful. And I think we'll continue to use them in the future. But of course, um, when I mentioned uh, improving your typing habits, we do wanna acknowledge the real patterns that are out there. Um, I do think things like sleep, play, consume, blast, 
and introvert extroverts are more so byproducts that are important nuances to capture. Um, but when it comes to coins, they are not actually part of the system, at least as it currently stands. Um, I mean, as characteristics, they are part of the system, just not in this way. Um, useful for cross checks, maybe that's a good way to put it. So um, yes, the painful update here is to use ambivert and omnivert. It does replace consume blast, play sleep, introvert extrovert. And um, you know, you could take your time with making this update. You know, you could update in a year or two, but I advise you might as well pull the band-aid as soon as possible and just start investing in what is an ambivert, what is an omnivert. Um, start putting some energy into seeing like how do we really better define these coins. I'm doing my best here, but we'll have to see. So my best way to describe it today is ambiverts have massive swings in their observing functions. Uh, omniverts have massive swings in their decider functions. Anyway, yeah, so update the checklist, figure it out, um, put in some kind of description. Um, I mean, I put some in the previous slide, but yeah, so ambiverts have massive swings in observers, omniverts have massive swings in deciders. Uh, ambiverts are balanced in the time that they're spending, whether they're deciders or, or observers, it doesn't matter. They're still spending some time with the DI, some time with the DE. Omniverts are spending some time in the OI, sometimes in the OE, independent of whether they're observers or deciders, right? Um, like I met a Play Blast EP, and that person is putting in time in the OI, right? But it's a lot of time in uh, the DE, and it's not necessarily cross-checked enough with the DI time. Um, yeah, so we have uh, nuanced animal stacks here. Um, the 16 animal stacks are represented here. And we can totally simplify this here with ambivert energy, omnivert energy, as well as the info panel parts. Um, yeah. But of course, I'm not showing here the OIOE, DIDE, because that gives the first animal for free. And so categorizing this all together, um, we have the 16 animal stacks represented by these four more simplified animal stacks. And uh, yeah, it, it'll be useful to um, track the nuances for your own uh, life understanding. But the, as far as category, categories go, you only really need these four categories for the animal stacks. So on to the nicknames. Nicknames, why are we trying to study the nicknames? So in order to really understand uh, the ambiverts and omniverts, we need to really come to, come to really need to come to understand um, the mopes, the crackheads, as well as the skibs and the douchebags, because these are what the ambiverts and omniverts essentially boil down into. Um, we want to build a deeper NI understanding of people. We want to start building it. And in order to do that, we really need to see what are these nicknames, you know, what is a mope really? When you understand the core of like someone who's investing two times over in a decider function, right, in their DI or with crackheads in the DE. What is that really like? What is that qualitatively like? You know, so when we go to type someone, how do we notice, understand, and observe and detect that someone is spending a lot of time in a decider function as opposed to an observing function? That's essentially what we'll have to do in order to use this coin for typing. Making sense and making sense of and owning the visual the behavioral patterns um, that's something we have to do with when it comes to the nickname so so mopes uh here we have jerry seinfeld he's uh omniverted uh information dominant person as you see represented here but here he's rejecting a hug from kesha and uh yeah that's what mopes do you know they're all in on their di uh, quite a bit. And here we have someone all in on their DE, Tony Robbins. He is a crackhead. Um, and so he's also actually an omniverted uh, information dominant person. So what are the similar characteristics there between Jerry and Tony? 
they're all in on some decider function. And so, yeah, the most extroverted type and the most introverted type, and they're both omniverted information dominant people. Here we have Ty Lopez, uh, traditional douchebag. Uh, he is selling you something from his garage. And uh, yeah, I'm sure whatever he says is useful. Uh, we have a skip here trying to show you the world. There's a play consume, uh, David Goggins. He is an ambiverted uh, information dominant person. And uh, yeah, moving on, we have uh, Mope, uh, JK Rowling. And she is uh, omniverted uh, energy dominant. We have uh, crackhead Oprah, omnivert energy. And we have uh, douchebag Marie Forleo, Skib Rihanna. Yeah. And, and with Marie, it's like that background is obnoxiously set up. So it's, can you ever live up to that? It's um, her studio is always so well done, well prepared. And so she's going all in on that OI and that's what makes her an ambivert. And we have someone all in on their OE, Rihanna, always showing you what's cool, you know? And uh, yeah, she's an ambiverted uh, energy dominant person. So back to this ambivert omnivert scale, uh, we also see some additional things of uh, nicknames, uh, these experimental modifiers. We'll come back to that. Um, but anyway, we have these celebrities. Where do they fit in? We have omniverts on the left and right, and we have the ambiverts in the middle. So um, skibs here, douchebags there, mopes there, crackheads here. And so it's interesting to note that Tony and Jerry, they're on the most extreme sides and they both happen to be omniverted um, information dominant so that's an interesting pattern to notice um, what kinds of people are the most of something right and that's why omnivert tends to be extreme especially in the deciding function so what does that say about deciding functions and you see how i could just make a video that just extrapolates more ni's and more ni's there's so many understandings to unravel from this ambivert omnivert point Probably 10 videos you can make on this. But anyway, moving on. Secondary nicknames. We have, um, we really want to dissect what's going on with Rihanna. Okay, so she's play, consume, sleep like me. And so consume and sleep are together. So this secondary nickname of Mope comes to be, so she's not just a skib, she's a skib Mope. And that Mope is jointed together. Whereas you have Marie Forleo and Ty Lopez who are, douchebags and they would technically be crackhead second however their crackhead energy is split up by that sleep as you know dave and chan have noted in the class that when you have that sleep interrupting the blast play it's not that pure crackhead energy right the crackheadedness is broken up even sleep blast play they have their crackhead energy together um just like the blast play sleep right so this is now giving more language to this phenomenon. So we have the true skib mope, which is what I'm using as an experimental modifier for secondary nicknames. Uh, we have uh, a true skib mope because the second nickname is easier to access. It's jointed. Whereas for um, consume, play, sleep, I'm calling them the pure skibs because their second nickname in this case, mope is disjointed. So they're way more leaning into the skib energy. However, as you'll note later on, that their third nickname is more accessible. So of course, everything in life that has a reaction, has an action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. So we're gonna start looking at this. Uh, the complete nicknames here. So the play consume sleep blast, we are skib mope, crackhead douchebag. And then the Ty Lopez and Marie Forleo, they are the douchebag, crackhead, mope, skib, pure douchebag versus our, you know, true skib mope. So we note here that the pure modifier, 
these are the ones that have the disjointed second nickname. And looking further, we know that the pure modifier also has a more closely jointed third nickname. And so we see the mope here is only is divided by only one animal. Whereas here the play blast crackhead is divided by two animals. There are two animals in between the play and the blast with my animal stack compared to Ty Lopez's, right? And uh, moving on, so you can dig into that further if you'd like. The complete nickname list is here if you want to know, um, along with the experimental modifiers. So back to this scale as well, you know, reintroducing everything. We have the first and four column, last four columns. Um, the first and last four columns are omniverts. The middle eight columns are ambiverts. The italics are true secondary nicknames. The non-italics are the pure primary nicknames. So we have a pure mope here, a pure mope there, a pure crackhead here, and a pure crackhead there, as well as the true, for example here, true crackhead douchebag is a play blast sleep. Uh, mine is the true skib mope. And right next to me, you have the true skib crackheads, right? The consume play blast sleep. And so we have these different nicknames and we have these modifiers to the nicknames. And this is a lot to absorb because this is really impacting the theory or at least the nuances of the theory um, way more, but we have a lot more to uncover and understand about the lived experience of uh, these different animals and animal combinations, nicknames and nickname combinations. Um, leave it to lead SE to uncover the nuance. Um, so in the future, to uncover even more, I'm going to make a video about something, something entropy. And uh, you know whether it's high or low entropy, we'll have to see and find out. Um, so yeah, stay tuned for that. And some main takeaways for this video include that your results will improve if you actually dig into this. The ambivert and omnivert coin it helps you see the system for what it really is at its core. Uh, yeah, and you'll have better understanding. You learned about the scales, the checklists, the nicknames, as well as building good typing habits. Because rather than looking at the subcategories, you're looking at the main categories that have been there the whole time the essence of the NI, that is OPS. And so now you're one layer deeper into the system, into seeing behind the matrix. So thank you. And if this video was valuable, I ask that you subscribe to my channel. And if you are already subscribed, thank you so much. You're a real one. So I appreciate it. Much love and take care.